My name is Justin Hill. I was the first in my family to graduate. Coming out of high school, like I legit barely graduated high school, bro. My grades would just slip and slip and slip and slip. But once I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with life. I didn't know if I wanted to go to the military, try to play ball, go to college. I got denied from every school that I and I'm applied to. That led me to a really deep state of depression. Like I was depressed. Mm -hmm. Like because and I'm seeing friends go after college, graduate and do all this stuff and I'm still here trying to um, figure myself out. What I dealt with was right. I would just stay in the house all day and I would just completely isolate myself from friends, family, whomever. And then like like us being black males, real like real legit raised and built to be tough, don't show emotion. And that has a tremendous effect on us. And I legit feel like me going through these battles and, you know, having a testimony now. Yes. You know, I now have a sense of purpose. This was I took the steps to educate myself. Mm -hmm. um, once I did that, I wanted to educate those around me. Hello everyone, my name is Justin Hill and you're tuning in to the Unlimited Power Show. Hello, powerful people. My name is Dwight Gil, a motivational speaker and holistic health coach. My mission in life is to inspire, motivate, and uplift individuals to take a holistic approach to life by solidifying a healthy mindset, practicing healthy habits, and being in tune spiritually. You are now tuning in to the Unlimited Power Show a personal development talk show that serves as an empowering platform. We feature people with a passion in the field of personal development, alternative health, psychology, and entrepreneurship. The purpose of the show is to bridge the wisdom and experiences of passionate people um, to urge you to have a conversation with yourself and discover your gifts, your talents, and abilities. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna share Justin Hill's experiences so that you can grow. So today I have the pleasure of conversing with the one and only Justin Hill. Welcome to the show, brother. I appreciate that, bro. Appreciate um, that. He's a leader, organizer, mental health advocate, writer, public speaker, and educator. He's an amazing dude already, you can tell. He's the founder <laughs> of Become a Threat Movement in South Florida, where organizers, activists, and community leaders work together to change the narrative, what it means to be labeled as a threat. So before I go any further, the one thing I don't do is introduce people. Yeah. You know, I give a little overview about yeah, you, yeah, but yeah. that does not define who you are. I agree. I agree. So Justin Hill, thank you so much for coming here. No, Can you give pleasure, us a pleasure. quick introduction about you and what you stand for? So my name is Justin Hill. Yes. I've lived in Miami my whole life. I'm a um, graduate from FIU, yes. class of 2017. I was the, the first in my family to graduate. Um, while I was in school, I basically had like an awakening. Like I think all black people had that awakening where yeah. we like, you know, discover ourselves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And with that, I, you know, just realized how we're, you know, we, we don't have the same opportunities as a lot of people. Yeah. You know, as far as um, finances, education, medical treatments and whatnot. So I really took it upon myself to you know, um, advocate for that. So, doing all this research, I basically saw that, you know, black people, me, me and you, yeah. we're basically labeled as threats. Mm -hmm. But it's always for the wrong reasons. It's not for our education. It's not for the things we stand. Um, so what, what, stand is, what does it mean to be a threat? What it means to be a threat? Being a threat is, you know, being feared but for what you stand for, being feared for your education, being respected for your education, being, being feared and respected for what you bring to a, to a job, your arts, your, your everything, you know, it, it's basically your being. You, you mm -hmm. want to be feared, but not for the negative, for the negative exactly. but for the positive yeah. attributes. So we try to change that narrative around. Mm. So instead of being feared for 
you know, how we're um, portrayed in, in a media setting. Yeah. We're feared for, you know, all good things. We're filled, we're, they fear us because of our yes. capacity and exactly. ability. Fear us for, mm -hmm. our, you know, our education, our abilities to what we bring, you know, um, um, to the table. Basically. So when, when we talk about fear, I think about the one thing that holds us back okay. as human beings. Uh, when we when we try to go up to the next level, we're trying to do something, started to become a threat movement, yeah. and whatever else we do, we we start to have fearful um, thoughts. Right? Okay. So tell us about a time where you were kind of like fearful about your future, and you don't really know what's gonna happen for you. Uh, um, I think we all had this. Um, I know I had mine coming out of high school. Yeah. Like I legit barely graduated high school, bro. Yeah. I mean, so you, I was you, struggling. You, yeah, I was legit struggling through high school. Yeah. All I did was play ball and try to like, talk. Why to did you girls. struggle? I don't know. I mean, I didn't take it serious. Mm. I did not take it serious at all. I I went to three high schools. I didn't take it serious at all. So, you know, as a result, school? and I went to a charter school, Doctor's Charter. Yeah. Then I went to North Miami Beach and I went to Central. Mm. That's where I finished off at Central. But, you know, I was trying to chase this basketball dream where, you know, my grades would just slip and slip and slip and slip. So, out, so once I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with life. I didn't know if I wanted to go to the military, try to play ball, go to college. I got denied from every school that I and I'm applied to. So that led me to a really deep state of um, basically depression. Like I was depressed, mm -hmm. like because and I'm seeing friends go after college, graduate, and do all this stuff, and I'm still here, you know, trying to um, figure myself out. Mm -hmm. So, um. That was probably the one time where I was probably fearful for my future because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So that led to me basically having to discover myself mm -hmm. and figure out what I'm passionate about. I mean, I've I've tried it all, bro. Mm -hmm. I've tried it all. I tried to go to the military. I tried to do all this other stuff, but then I've you know realized that my passion is education. You know what mm. I mean? So once I graduated, you know, got my degree. That's when I figured out, like, yo, like, I could really change lives with, you know, what I stand for and change lives with, you know, what I bring to the table. What, what does de depression mean to you? Depression like, to me? I mean, it's, I mean, depression is, I think everybody has their own definition. Because, like, my, for instance, uh, I lost my phone. I'm depressed. You, you see know, that, that, say that? People say that. And yeah. I think nowadays that term is used so lackadaisical now. Yeah. And we and we just throw it out there. For example, if you say the weather's bipolar, right? Yes. A lot of people take offense to that now. What I dealt with right. was I would just stay in the house all day, I, and I would just completely isolate myself from friends, family, whomever, and I would just, you know, stay isolated from everyone. And when I spoke to people about, you know, what I'm going through, yeah. that's when they um, suggested that I should go see, you know, someone. Someone, right. Something. Mm -hmm. so, and then, like, like us, being black males, they, like, there's always a stigma with that. Right. You know what I mean? There's always, you know, because real, like, real legit raised and built to be tough, don't show emotion, and that has a tremendous effect on us. Mm. You know? So when you were depressed, did mm -hmm. people know? Um, Probably those closest to me. That's closest to you? I would try to hide it through playing ball, through working out. Yeah, like what goes in your head when you're depressed? Because, I mean, I know what goes in my head like yeah. when I went through some depressive state. But what Never really it, had like, anything. What, what, did, what, what, what did you think about? Um, To be honest, nothing nothing like suicidal thoughts. I yeah. never had any suicidal yeah. thoughts. I was just always anxious and I was always worried. Worried, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I was always worried about what's the next move. Uh -huh. How did, you, how did you feel, like, your body? Like, were you tired? Were you, like, I, I need to I was to always sleep. tired. Did you feel rest? I was always tired. I was always yawning everywhere. Yeah. Because I was, you know, like, I was restless. Mm. Always yawning. I was always, um, you know, trying to stay awake, basically. I yeah. was, like, I was just so fatigued. Mm. Mentally, physically, everything. And then I would try to get back into the gyms. That wouldn't work. Mm. You know so what, what I mean? would what, what would cause you to go to the gym and then not do it? Like what? Just depression, bro. Just you, oh, just yeah, like, like, like oh yeah. That takes a toll on you, man. Yeah, it takes a toll. It, it like like it takes a massive toll on you, mm -hmm. from work 
school, friendships, relationships, it takes a toll on you mentally. And your body starts, you know, up here first. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah that, so what were, what were the steps you started taking, like, to, like, okay, now I got to get rid of this? Yeah, I, I talked to trusted individuals. Mm -hmm. Talked to a lot of trusted friends who I know. Um, and then I seek therapy. I have a therapist now. I mean, like, trust me. For anyone watching, trust me. Seek therapy. And I don't care if you're okay or not okay. Like, therapy is important. Because we all need that opinion from someone who doesn't know us. Yeah. You know, just to sit there and say, yo, A, B, and C is going on. Help me out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we always say, therapist? Nah, and I don't even trust me. You need one. Mm. Trust me. <laughs> What do you think about this statement? Depression is taking a deep rest. Depress. When you depress, you, mm -hmm. you need to take a deep rest. Hmm. What do you think about that statement? You said deep, deep rest. Deep rest. Deep like, rest. When I'm depressed, now I need to take a deep rest. Do you think depression has to do with, like, being tired, being... It could lead to that. I mean, when I was going through my series, I was always sleeping. I'll sleep from like five or six, like five to six hours at a time, bro. Yeah. You know, just sleeping, just, just in the dark room. You know, my room just dark. But you kept getting more tired. Yeah. yeah. So you you were not doing as much, but you were still getting tired. I'm telling tired. you, depression is real, bro. So it, <laughs> it even t it takes a it takes a toll on your body. It yeah, takes a toll course, on your progress. Yeah, yeah of course. Of and then course. so now you guys trusted advisors. What did you do mm -hmm. next? How did you, how did you kind of overcome this this demon? To be honest with you, I became an advocate for it. You became an advocate. Yeah, Tell us about I started your to um I worked with Nami. Nami's a nonprofit here in South Florida, and it's actually you know um nationwide. Yes. And I um got involved with that. And I'm actually the brand ambassador for um, the African American um, sector of it. Yeah. And you know what we try to do is we basically try to, you know, well, well, you know, um, educate those, mm -hmm. you know, blacks who really don't know about mental illness. We, like when we're growing up, we're not taught about, you know, depression, depression anxiety, anxiety. Like that. We're not we're mm -hmm. not taught that. So, I, when I discovered it. And I felt like I called at the right time because now I could not only be an advocate for it, but I know more about it. You know what I mean? And I, and I really want to be that voice behind it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To help those with, um, you know. So what drives, you, what drives you to do that? What's the purpose? To help. Like, I, I legit love helping people. Mm -hmm. I legit want to see people. I, how does it make you feel? Good. Like, Wonderful. How, like I'm saying, how does, it, <laughs> how does it really make you feel when you do that? It gives me a sense of purpose. Purpose. It gives me a real big sense of purpose. Because I feel like throughout me trying to find myself, I, I didn't have a purpose. I felt like I didn't really have a purpose. And I would legit pray like, yo, like, what's my purpose in life? And I legit feel like me going through these battles and, you know, having a testimony now. Yes. You know, I now have a sense of purpose. And I feel like my purpose is to help those who, you know, have dealt with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So purpose is like, it's, it's a, it's a, do you think purpose is like a life force? Like we all need to have a purpose? Because a lot of us, we live our lives just, we do what we can to get money, right? Mm, yeah, but not yeah, everyone yeah. has a purpose. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, like I like doing this, I love doing this, and I do it because it's part of my purpose. Mm -hmm. So how important do you think it is for somebody to find purpose within their life? I think a lot of us try to rush it, if try that makes sense. sense. And I say that because when we're growing up, we're taught as soon as you're 18, you're an adult now, right? Yeah. Like, that's what we're taught in America. We're taught as soon as you're 18, you're an adult. And you're legit just getting started. You know what I mean? So with that, you're trying to find your purpose so young. And, and I... I personally feel like you have to go through things to find your purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you legit don't wake up and say, oh, I was, my purpose in life is to become a doctor or become a lawyer or become a teacher or become a janitor. Like, I don't, like, I, like, like, I believe there's two forks in, in the road, right? And then you have this fork and this fork, right? You could take either way, but I feel like the, the, 
once you realize you're taking the right fork in that road, you're going more towards your purpose. And then you'll find roadblocks. Mm -hmm. You'll find anything to, you know, stop you from getting t to your purpose. You know what I mean? You just and, overcome that. Exactly. You know, like when you're a kid, you're like, when I grow up, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like the doctor, lawyer. I'm gonna be this. I never uh, thought that. When I grow up, I'm gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say that when you become, you gr then you you grow up. Yeah. Not like growing and like as a kid from like short to tall, mm -hmm. but like when you become this person, then you you go up. Like you, you go up to another level, you grow up yeah, and yeah. you become like an adult version of like your, um, of your best self or your potential. So my formula, I think for progress, for purpose is pain mm -hmm. plus progress equals purpose. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you go through some pain, mm -hmm. which can be categorized as like mental you know, a little m mental illness yeah. or depression, yeah. or you lose something, you lose, uh, you go to financial trouble, you go through pain. Yeah, Out yeah. of your pain, you're like, oh, I hate this. I overcame it though. Yeah. Hmm, a lot of people might be going through the same thing. Yeah. Let me do something that can help. Then you have a purpose. That's, yeah. what, that's why I did, I do this. It's like, I used to listen to motivational speakers. And then you figure And then out I was like, yo, this is this. really yeah. helping me figure life out. Yeah, I'm course, like, yo, yeah. this is pretty dope. I'm like, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So you work with kids. Mm -hmm. um, how how do you see their mindset? Like, cause right now in the hood, things things popping off. You know, mm -hmm. things go left. Mm -hmm. People are dying. People are losing their lives. We're in a battle in the hood. Yeah. So so it's battle in the hood, not boys in the hood. Mm -hmm. What do you see the mindset of the people that you engage with when you talk to them? Where, where are they, what are they thinking? Where are they at? These kids are smart. They're smart. Trust me. These kids are smart. They're, they're open-minded. They, they want to receive information. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to learn. However, however, in our schools, there's no resources. You know what I mean? Right. I went to Madison um, Middle School last week to um, meet meet on um, someone and the or and 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 the schools one classroom like there's 15 chairs to every to to 30 students you know what i mean so how are you gonna learn in the classroom that's that's over you know um that's that's, that's jam-packed with students right no books barely any supplies the computers are outdated the boards are outdated you know what I mean? So there's, there's, yes, you know, there, there are some bad apples in a bunch, but the students who I see and, and who I deal with, they're legit, like they legit want to learn and legit want to do something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course we're put in these, these neighborhoods that are, you know, they're, they're filled with gun violence. Yeah. You know, they're filled with um, gentrification. There's a liquor store on every corner. So, you know, their their parents work late hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't you you can't blame the kids sometimes. Sometimes you have to blame the system. So they're a byproduct of their environment? Or do you do you believe in that statement? That you're a byproduct of your environment? I believe in it to a certain extent, right? Okay, so of course you have those who made it out the hood, you know, like yeah. they say. They made out the hood. But then again at the same time, there are those who don't make it out. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can't necessarily agree with that quote because I know people who, who legit have grown up in a, in a nuclear home, mother, father, dog in a fence. Yeah. But they're in jail right now. I literally know no folks like that. And then I know people on the opposite side of the spectrum who are legit running businesses or they're playing ball in the league or they're do doctors and lawyers. Like, I know people like that. So that quote doesn't really sit well with me. Be honest mm. with you, because it's it's. I feel like it's it's thrown on us to say like like a safety blanket. You know what I mean? Oh, you don't have to to make it because you know you're you were on um, born here, little Haiti, Liberty City, or or you know like like it's okay you know because you know you're you wasn't given these opportunities. You know what I mean? So 
it's not. Nah, it doesn't sit mm. well. <laughs> when, when you was a kid, yeah, and you was walking down the hood, walking down the street, mm -hmm. did did he ever get like a character walk up to you and like say, "Hey, you want to join?" I don't know how to, I don't know how people recruit for games, I mean, but have you ever been approached to like? I mean, I wasn't really. I'm I'm that I'm influence? not. I'm not from the hood, to be honest with you, I, and I wasn't born in, in the city. I wasn't you wasn't born, born in the city? I wasn't born in the city. I wasn't born in Overtown. I was born in North Miami. Well, I consider that the hood. Okay, okay. I'm okay. saying the hood, like the neighborhood. Yeah. The, that's the hood. I feel like, no, because it, the reason why I, I say that is because a lot of people consider that the hood, and I actually hate that statement. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I should, I should probably statement. just stop using the hood. Yeah, I actually hate that statement. Oh, okay. Honest. But, but yeah, I was the on... Neighborhood. I was community. basically yeah, that's a better word. Community. I like community better. Yeah, I, Commu yeah. yeah. Like, Hood, I, do you think? Okay, was, so let's talk about that. Yeah, let's yeah, skip, yeah. Let's talk about let's that. Let's skip a, that that question. Let's go. So the hood. Mm -hmm. Why do you why do you hate that statement? What, what's the name? Yeah, statement because I feel like they always they. When you think about the hood, what do you think about? Be honest. Um, I just think about where, like where I grew up. Okay. Like the hood to me is just where I came from. Perfect. Okay. That's my hood. You know, okay. like, I just use that statement. I'm yeah. not like oh. That's the hood, like a rundown place, mm -hmm. or that's the hood because it's just like ratchet, you know? Like just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm not saying you like, like I just hate how a lot of people, you know, associate that with with blacks. Mm. It's not really, you know. I feel like we that happens a lot, yeah. a lot, and it's kind of like, you no, know, they're not from the hood. So when I speak, yeah, I always get this compl well, this compliment. What's the compliment? You speak very well. Yeah. I hate that. Don't ever tell me that. Yeah. Not you, but people, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. they always consider us as someone who, you know, tall black male, he's, he's, he can't speak, you know? He can't, you know, put, put words together. And I've gotten mm -hmm. that, compliment, well, that compliment a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, like, I try, a lot of times I try not to um, take offense so like when you're a yeah, threat, yeah, yeah. when you're a threat, and not in the sense of I'm gonna hurt you, yeah, 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 but I might hurt your pockets because I might take your job, mm. type threat. Okay, that's a what, threat. Yeah. What, <laughs> when you're a threat, you get certain like energies from people. Like you're walking down the street. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The person walks over the next street, and you're like, mm -hmm. really, dude? Or like, like you experience little that's good of bad, racism. Though. Yeah, that's that. Should you like kind of like get rattled up and get mad about that? What do you do? Like. Um, it's funny because a lot of my conversations as I've been progressing have been different. Yeah. Um, my conversations used to be from talking about sports to talking about women to now I'm engaging in conversations on ways to build. Yeah. Ways to organize, ways to network with the people. You know what I mean? So I know I'm a threat. Yeah, I know I'm a threat because I'm educated. I'm an educated black male. I have a degree. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I I want to go somewhere. Right. And that is legit a walking threat. Yeah, and let's talk <laughs> about walking threats. Yeah. Um, it's like if we're not walking dead, dead mm -hmm. in consciousness, we gotta like kill our dreams, kill our aspirations, mm -hmm. kill our ability to help our people grow. Yeah in order to actually um, be alive. We have to kill what we have, or what else you, they'll what, kill you. So okay. let me explain. Yeah, yeah, the reason yeah. why I'm saying that is that you have to, somebody said, Nipsey Hussle died. Mm -hmm. And you better be careful. You better not be talking about all types of stuff or they're going to get you, right? And oh, you know, like based, that, oh, that was, you know, yeah. before it was the whole conspiracy, the conspiracy, conspiracy theory, thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, listen, I'd rather, I'd rather die for what you. Yeah. I'd rather die in person than not and die in spirit. Mm, okay. So speaking of that, how do you feel about this whole Nipsey Hussle thing and like the fact that he was he was a threat to the system? He was a threat. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree um, yeah. But in his community, he was not necessarily a threat. He was helping those people. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about the dynamic that you can be a threat and do good, but the your own people can, at the same time, um, be the one to take you off. Yeah. Um. So the Nipsey thing is like. What do you feel it's, about that? It's really it's touched me in ways I didn't believe it would touch me. Yeah. 
like legit i'm like i'm still dealing with it i actually don't want to watch the memorial session tomorrow because i know i'm gonna you know still get sad about it but for someone like him he was a he was a threat you know what i mean like he legit knew what he was talking about he knew how to back up information he was intelligent he, he was woke like they say and then at the same time he was trying to build black his 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 neighborhood you know what i mean yeah. he had he had um he bought a whole plaza you know he had his own clothing store he was trying to do all this stuff but then at the same time it legit sucks that he was taken out by one of our own kind you know what yeah. i mean and i and i hate to stomach that because i feel like a lot of us fight for gun for f for stopping gun violence yeah, you know, like um, I don't know if they're still doing it, but they have a um, they're having a strike right now in Liberty City, and they're trying to stop gun violence, and they've been on like a um, like a um, hunger strike, you know, and that's you know we're we're fighting for all this, like we've legit been fighting for all this, and then for for me to see someone like Nipsey to be taken out by one of our own kind is kind of it's it's it kind of makes you frustrated you know what i mean because yeah because because to see someone who i like i see myself in nipsey and and a lot of us see ourselves in nipsey you know a lot, like a um like a lot of us want to make change a lot of us want to build and organize but a lot of us just don't know how yeah you know what i mean and for me seeing nipsey taken out right before his prime of him doing all of this was devastating and it yeah. is devastating for it's us. like it makes you think um what's the purpose mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. if i spend all my back, life yeah. working on my purpose working on yeah. my dreams like uh, i'm spending 12 hours 14 mm -hmm. hours 16 hours not getting anything for like four or five years yeah and then you have like a good seven eight years of just like getting getting to the top getting to the top yeah and yeah. then like you're being featured you're like forbes 30 under 30 and then blah you're dead yeah i could only like i had to, i grieved nipsey hustle's death yeah me too not Still like man. oh my god i'm crying i'm like but it was like it hurt it hurt like for it a does, couple yeah. days yeah. um i mean I, it's not bad now it's just now i have to just deal with it mm -hmm. but how did that dude his death impact so many people mm -hmm. um even people who didn't know him yeah so this dude energy must have been off the ground right <laughs> i think um i think that that just goes to show you like the power of influence like i saw a yeah. tweet and the tweet said um it's crazy how a dude i never met a dude i never spoke to a dude i've never even been around you know has a is death is like affected me yeah you know what i mean and the same thing i've never seen nipsey i never spoke to nipsey but his his influence had a real positive impact on me you know what i mean and and I've been listening, to, um, you know, like I've been a fan of him for a while, probably since I've heard him on like a, like a mixtape in like 2010 somewhere. Mm -hmm. You didn't like, buy his $100 mixtape? No, nah, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, hey, you see, Nipsey says buy my mixtape for $100. Mm -hmm. If you can't buy it now, I'll give you a hundred pieces and nuggets of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able to buy ten of those mixtapes in the future but but if you jam to that album he has a lot of gems in that album though mm. a lot so yeah oh, shoot i probably would have bought it <laughs> what do you think that we can do to not like fight depression yeah 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 not to like fight anxiety mm -hmm. not to like fight it what can we do to do the opposite of of that of the things that make us anxious like what can we do to to be happy what, what did you do that when you figured out oh i need to do this for myself I think the best, well, not I think, I know the best thing that we could do is to educate ourselves. Yeah. We have to educate ourselves. We have to begin to educate ourselves, our family members, coworkers, friends, everybody. We, we have to educate our, our, you know, our, our village on what, what, you know, mental illness is. A lot of us don't know. I didn't know mm -hmm. until I was dealing with it. You know, trust, I, I truly believe everyone deals with some form of mental illness, yeah. some form, whether it's mild, severe, bipolar, something. We, we, we all deal with it. But, but what I did first was I took the steps to educate myself. 
Mm -hmm. um, once I did that, I wanted to educate those around me, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't want to, and I don't want to, um, you know, give someone the fish. I want to, you know, teach, teach them how, how to fish. fish. So exactly. Let's follow right back of that. So Kamika mm -hmm. John from Jean from Facebook mm -hmm. says, "What approaches do you think should be taken to try and educate children, in particular, and about children, mental yeah. health mm -hmm. and dealing with depressed feelings?" Okay. Um, that's a very good question because I actually wrote this um, in a paper somewhere. But yeah. um, when I was in Thailand teaching for that short amount of time, um, students were legit having like mental mental um, days. Like like they had like mental health days. Right. Where, where like they would hum and meditate and do all this stuff be, um, before school, during school, and after school. And I asked, um, you know, and I was on teacher, I was like, you know, why do students do this? And she explained to me how, um, how the Thailand um, system of education, they take mental health serious. Right. Like, they take it serious. And these are kids who are like five years old, all the way to senior high. They're taking these classes and they're doing these, um, you know, these, these um, mantras and everything just to make sure they're right mentally. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that, they're going to reach every student, right? But, but but it helps the majority of them, right? Right. So we need to allocate our funding towards mental health, um, you know, um, um, research, mental health resource, and everything like that. Yeah. Because um, I've never been to a, to a private school, but I've spoken to private school teachers, and they say that they have something geared towards that, you know. But why why our schools don't have that? You know, our our schools that we, you know, went to, they don't have these type of programs. Mm -hmm. So and I and and we're the ones that, that deals with, you know, these feelings of anxiety and depression on a and on a you know much higher scale. Much higher state. Statistically. Yeah. That's just not me talking. That's that's facts. Just speaking of yeah. statistics, they said that since um t now it has doubled. Mm-hmm. They say that um, suicide has doubled among teens of in the course, last couple yeah, of years. Of course, yeah, of course. I mean, so it's look at what's easy. going on, bro. Yeah. I mean, you have Parkland. You have all these shootings in San Antonio. You have, you, you have the Vegas shooting. And those are just shootings that made the national scale. Yeah. Imagine those that you don't hear about. Mm -hmm. And then imagine the black kids who are dealing with this on a daily who are dealing with these shootings on a daily in their neighborhood. Their mom and dad aren't at home because they're working. Or their mom or dad isn't home. Their mom or dad was, you know, killed by, by gun violence. They have to be the, the, the sole leader in their home. That could, that could legit take a mental toll on you. Mm -hmm. And then imagine doing that, that at such an early age. You're, you're doing that at six, seven, eight years old. You know what I mean? So... While you're, while, yes, it's true that, 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 um, that we can't really change it right now. Like, it, it's legit going to take just mass education. And we have yeah. to keep trying to break the stigma, breaking the stigma, breaking the stigma. Because, because amongst black men, we have one of the highest suicide rates. I did wow. not know that. Yes. I, I, I didn't yes. know that either. Yes. So, and then on a national level, uh -huh. 18 to 24, suicide is the number two rated on um, on cause of death amongst you know those from 18 to 24 and i just got out of that bracket i'm 26 mm -hmm. you know what i mean so you know so so people who we know are legit in that bracket mm. so we have to, to, to educate ourselves to try to break the stigma mm. you know when you say that i think like suicide is the result of um lack of mental health Mm -hmm. Mental health care, mm -hmm. plus anxiety over time, plus stresses of life, mm -hmm. um, making you think that the future cannot be changed, it cannot be altered, that it's just going to be as it is right now forever. Mm -hmm. So anxiety is like fear painting mental pictures of your mind, negative images, yeah. saying that things are going to be really horrible. Um, but every time that you put energy into that, that thought in your head and you're like, oh, things are gonna be so bad and you keep focusing on how bad it is. 
if you were if you were trying to like go towards a specific direction, you would try to look forward, right? Like this is where yeah. I'm going. But if you're like driving one way and then you're just like you're looking to the side, like what would happen? You would crash, right? Mm -hmm. So anxiety a lot of times cause people to crash because anxiety is the result of stress. Um, so someone asks in the comments here, says, what, what is the best way to deal with like any anxiety? Okay. Um, in my personal opinion, I truly believe that everybody's way of coping is different. You know what I mean? Because um, um, a lot of us deal with, with anxiety, man. A lot of us deal with anxiety. Yeah. But my way of coping with anxiety, um, I've never really dealt with anxiety. But what I've done mentally to help myself out is I legit started to, to, to do things that I love doing. Yeah. And I feel like in this, like, we live in a rat race right now. You know what I mean? Like, the only way to slow down is to speed up. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we're living in this rat race, and we, we stray away from the things we love doing. A lot of us stray away from things we love doing. We, we stray away from just picking up a book and reading. Yeah. Going to the beach, playing a video game, mm -hmm. just going outside. We're we're attached to our phones. Yeah. You know what I mean, they 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 um they had a stat last night that said um um texting and driving is the new drunk driving. Mm. I mean, like yeah. we're attached on our That's phones. There's the um the information just coming at us so fast, so fast. I mean, I had to legit get off of Twitter because all I saw was Nipsey, 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 Nipsey. Right. And that took a toll on me last yeah. week. I'm like, no, I have to it, get off. It caused this. a lot of grief. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to stop you right there, and, and let's talk just about that. Social media impact on your mental health. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had my friend told me, he said, I would love to use Instagram. Yeah. But I had to delete it. Every time I go there, I feel like my life sucks. I feel him. I agree. Every time I go there, I see yeah. a bunch of people doing things, traveling the world, going mm. to seminars, mm. starting businesses, yeah. and they're living a the life. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm over here. I'm just, I'm just bored. I, I'm, I have, I hate life. I got student loans. I got to go to work every day. So you think yeah. that social media? Sometimes you need to detach to reconnect with yourself. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to. Social media is a highlight tape, right? Mm -hmm. So, if I'm a coach, right? Yes. And I'm look, looking at your highlight tape. tapes. Yeah. I'm looking at all the good stuff you did. Yeah. I'm looking at all the dunks and the three pointers, and I'm looking at your the way the crowd did this, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at the best of your highlight tape, right? Yeah. The your best of reel. everything you did. Yeah. But as I dig deeper, I'm realizing like, yo, this was the only point you scored this this um this whole game, or you had four fouls, or you had this or that. So. As you go deeper into someone's life, you realize that it's not all the glory, you know, that, that they're that, that, portraying, that, that, on that the, portraying on the net. Exactly. Well, so you, you know, let me, let me make it clear to you. My life is not so glorious, mm -hmm. but I, I, mean, I live in passion <laughs> yeah. and purpose. Dreams and goals can become magnets mm -hmm. that can pull you towards the future and yeah. through the pain. Yeah. So the reason why I brought that up is because someone asked me, does finding purpose help with suicidal thoughts? And before I let you answer, I want to answer that question too. Mm -hmm. um, I think it does. Okay. Because when you have something that's pulling you towards the future, whatever's in your way, your will is going to pull you through. I let your dreams it. pull you. Let yeah. your goals pull you. Let your purpose pull you through the wall. Yes, 100%. I believe when, when you find something you love, when you find something you love doing, when you find something you're working towards, do you let nothing get in the way of that? Yeah. You know what I mean? No matter what happens. Um, mm -hmm. I do believe at the same time, when you're, when you're getting towards your goal, there's going to be obstacles. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be something. I mean, if you want to become a doctor or lawyer, there's going to be a test you have to take. You may not pass the first time. Yeah. You may not pass the second time. But are you going to persevere and say, you know what, this is how bad I want this? If you feel like your purpose in life is to become a doctor, become a lawyer, you won't let anything get in between that. Yeah. Anything. And I believe those who are strong-minded will stay motivated to get to their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Or just get back up. Yeah, exactly. I say um, life is not about having the courage to never fall down. Mm -hmm. It's about having the courage to get back you up every go, time yeah. you do. Because it's, it's much easier to stay down. 
Yeah. It's easy to stay down, but it's hard to get up. It's hard to get yeah, up. Yeah, so somebody asked, like, what are some approaches that you think yeah. that someone can take to help their friends and family who are going through a depressive state or struggling mm -hmm. with uh, mental issues that they don't want to seek professional help? Okay. Um, so my answer to that, I would say, be a friend. I would be listen. listen. To be like, a friend and listen. listen. Yeah, you know, yeah, actually, yeah. the best thing you can do to help somebody suffer less mm -hmm. is to listen. Yeah. Uh, if you want I to help somebody, say that. yeah, <laughs> listen and just be, be a like, friend. Okay. And then you could also snap them out of it. They could be like, "There's no, there's, there, that's that's tricky." Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. You have to it's know tricky. a lot more. But like, somebody could say, um, "I never, I don't see how I can ever go through this." You can tell them, well, I went through this before. When I did, I found yeah. out. Empathy is it really was, big. It was, yeah. oh, I did the same thing. It was, I got over it, though. Exactly. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, you did? Mm -hmm. How? Then so you tell I them think, A, B, and C. And you'd be like, oh, this is what I did, and this is what worked for me. Maybe mm -hmm. you can try it. Yeah, of course, yeah. So that's what I would say. I would say, me, personally, when I'm trying to get out, out of a state, I do a physical challenge. Okay. I test my, my body. I, I, I start training really hard, start running and working out. I change my nutrition diet. That's like one of the major things. I'll be like, okay, I got to stop eating this. So I try to, I stop I doing that. that yeah. And then I do detox. I do a detox. Like I do like a quick three-day juice detox. Um, that also helps you if you were like struggling with like a substance you, you're intaking. And then it's like, it's like slowing you down. You, you detox your body. Mm -hmm. It allows you to start fresh. Yeah. And when you challenge your body, you challenge your mind, um, then you're kind of like going towards a new route. Mm-hmm. But you just have to start it. They say like I have, I have re, re jump started my life mm -hmm. multiple times, yeah, a lot of true. times, yeah, I that, probably yeah. four or five times a, a year. Mm -hmm. um, but every time I do, it takes me up into another level, and then it just keeps going. You just keep building up, keep building up, yeah. and then you start to um, find beauty in your pain. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're there like, is... yo, I would never been here had yeah. I not done that or went through that. Mm -hmm. So I and think I call it the yeah. the beautiful struggle. The beautiful struggle. The beautiful struggle. Let's have some more questions about your organization. Tell us okay. what is it all about, mm -hmm. and how do people support your movement? Yeah. So okay. become a threat. What is this organization, yeah. and how do people support this movement? Okay. So um, it started in 2017. It started from a Facebook post. Yeah. Like it legit started from a fake um, and I'm a Facebook post, and I was just you know seeing who are threats. And um, society, and I'm a big Malcolm X fan. Um, you know, Martin Luther King, Huey Newton, and Fred Hampton. They were threats because they threatened the the general direction of society. I'm like, yo, like they're threats. And then my next post the next day was become a threat. My next post was become a threat. My next post was become a threat. And then I see friends' posts become a threat. I'm like, yo, like I, I could do something with this. And then I, you know, sat down with, you know, with, with a few friends and they was like, yo, like, let's just, you know, let's, let's make shirts. We made shirts. Um, it, it was a really big turnout. But in 2018, um, we kind of fell back from it. I was, and I, I wasn't in the right mm -hmm. space mentally at all. And I didn't want to, you know, exert energy, negative energy in, in places where I don't want it. So I took a break from, um, Come through it, and I didn't post. I didn't talk about it. Didn't wear a shirt. Didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And 2019, I said, "Yo, like I really want to make change. I want to see change. I want to, and I want to get more into the communities. I want to get into these schools. I want to get into to these organizations and network and organize and do all this other stuff to help, you know." And then I decided to, you know, let's make become a threat something where people could join, make it an organization, make it people who. If your passion is mental health, we have a section for that. If your passion is finance and entrepreneurship, we have a section for that. Same thing with education, same thing with art, same thing with this. That's how I really envision it right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I I um my website is up now, mm -hmm. justinhillonline.com, and you'll see everything that you know that that I've done, you know, the photos and everything like that. And I really want this in an organization for us. I want this for us. I want this for the people. I want this to be something that we could be proud of. It's never I. We could be proud of. And I want this our organization. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I was just talking to someone who had 
similar vision. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a lot more nonprofits because there's a lot more people with more purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. Yeah. That's the purpose of the show. That's the purpose of Unlimited Power is to urge you to find your purpose mm -hmm. by showing someone that can bridge the, the message. Yeah. Right? I see like our stories is a bridge to share the wisdom and knowledge of the universe. I agree. It's like God has all of this great stuff. Mm -hmm. And he gives us a story so we can relate to other people. It's like his story. I said his story. It's history. Yeah, H I S. Yeah, like his, his story. Yeah, his exactly. story yeah. is history. Yeah. Um, and your story matters, but every day you have to work in it. Where do you see yourself in five years? I I love this question because people don't really know. Uh, it's the year 2023 and my life is incredibly inspiring, fulfilling, mm -hmm. and I am living up to the words I've been saying for the rest, mm -hmm. for the last five years. Mm. Um, I reside in a beautiful house yeah. with a beach in the backyard and a gym in the backyard. Also, it's the year 2023, I've released five books, mm -hmm. each of them best-selling book each year. And I have just now reached a $10 million income in my company, helping content creators share their messages with the world by using technology to bridge the gap between your passion, your purpose, and profit. So as a media company, as a personal development speaker, I'm getting paid over $10,000 to speak to all types of audiences all around the world. Yeah. And at the same time, I've just got married, have a kid, and now I'm just starting life at a new stage. So that's a piece of my vision statement. Let's build. And I remember Let's it because I Let's say build, it every bro. day. So yeah. you got to have a vision. And you yeah, got to let yeah, your yeah. vision pull you. You got to manifest times. that, yeah. All right. So mm. if you can think of one last thing, mm -hmm. trying to urge somebody, hey, get out there. Find your passion. Find your purpose. Yeah. Take care of your mental health. What, yeah. would, what would your last message be? My last message would be? Yeah, just find your sense of, just find your sense of passion, man. Find your, find your sense of purpose. Find why you wake up every day to, to do what you do every day. Find out what makes you happy. Find out what makes you sad. Find out who is in your corner. Find out who's not in your corner. Find out these things. And then at the end of the day, you will legit begin to discover your purpose. You'll begin to realize that, hey, you know, I'm here doing this for, X, Y, and Z, or I'm not here to do X, Y, and Z. You have to put yourself in a position to become vulnerable. And when when I became vulnerable, that was the best time of my life. I, you know, figured out what made me, you know, the guy who I am today, the man who I am today. So find your sense of purpose. You have to dig deep. You have to soul search. And then once you find that sense, like once you find that sense of passion, just hold on to it. And I promise you, you'll be all good. That's amazing. I said vulnerability is moldability. Mm, you can mold your life that. by being vulnerable to yeah. different things. Yeah, I like that one. Thank vulnerability you. is more, I like that. Thank you for sharing your message on I that. I appreciate that, brother. Sharing your unlimited power. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> appreciate that. You got unlimited me, power. Man. Yeah, I'm trying, man. <laughs> That's I appreciate dope, that for man. having me, bro. So, you know, thank you so much appreciate for being it, on the show. I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate Great you, things man. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to get out of here. We're going to become a threat to society. Exactly. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> exactly. We're going to change the narrative mm -hmm. of the society. Yes. We're going to here. We're going to have to have these conversations yes. with the society. Engage. Yes. And really um, becoming a threat. Mm -hmm. Threaten uh, the things that's holding you back. Mm -hmm. uh, from your genes, threaten the things that's stopping you from getting to the next level yes. uh, by by being the person um, that is worthy of great success. Yes. Um, so with that being said, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the Unlimited Power Show. You can follow me at CEO Ambitionist. My name is Edouard Gilles, and I want to remind you that you have the unlimited power in you to achieve whatever it is that you want. But until you believe that, the world will forever miss your talents, mm -hmm. your gifts, and all the great things that you have to offer. Yes. So let your light shine. Don't hide it. Don't dim it. And be sure to watch this show every Tuesday and Friday. That's good. That's good. Peace. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Hello everyone, my name is Justin Hill and you're tuning in to the Unlimited 
our show. All my life, I didn't know the Do I go to my mom? Do I go to my dad? Do I go to a friend? Do I go to a home? And my biggest battle was, you know, breaking that wall and trying to figure out how I could kill this demon. Thank you.